Body positivity has encouraged so many people of all sizes to feel comfortable in their... So I posted that video last year about how I would love to see just larger bodies being at the front of the body positivity movement once more, because that's what it was originally intended for. And if you don't believe me, please just Google it. Um, and you can imagine the flavour of the negative comments on that one. And they were all about telling me, they were all telling me how that fat people were never meant to be part of the body positivity movement. We've co-opted it to victimize ourselves. And it was originally for people who have limb difference or like scarring, okay. Or there's something about your body that you cannot change and that's okay. It's all about accepting things about your body that you cannot change. And just to let everybody know, being fat is most definitely something that you cannot, you can change. There are some people on the planet that may have an inability to change the circumstances when it comes to weight. And those are very few people. When it comes to the majority of fat people, it's very possible for you to lose weight. And what I really love about these people is that they, they real deal do try to like co-op any organization they possibly can to try to justify their claims and stakes with being fat, which is actually very very terrible because the whole entire reason body positivity was even a thing was because of like vietnam veterans that came home that were missing particular body parts appendages and things like that but the baseline understanding of what it is is you should accept yourself whether you're bald whether you're missing an arm whether there are things about you that you can no longer change because sometimes when you get older you just have less and less accessibility to things and that's the purpose to accept these things as things that you cannot change but that's okay because that doesn't mean that you're less of a human being. That doesn't mean that you're less of a person. That doesn't mean that your life should still suck dick because a lot of people get into this mentality of like, oh, my life is now like changed irreparably. I can no longer do the things I want to do. And that's very depressing for a lot of people. But once you come to the understanding that it's okay and things can, you can adjust circumstances and you can change how you live your life. That's the point is understanding that it's okay. The fatness though is insane. No, there is no reason why the fat people should ever be a part of this organization. It's actually really insane that these people try to be, but it is what it is. Okay. Now let's just follow that point through. By the way, I don't know if you guys can notice it, but her overline is serious, dude. If I had overline like this, people would be saying I'd be looking like I sucked off the Kool-Aid man. It's too much. I see where your natural lips are, and then I see this overline. Am I the only one that notices this stuff? Because sometimes I, I, I gaze upon these videos, and I look in the comment section real quick just to see if anybody's talking about it. Nobody says anything about it. It's too obvious. You need to stop overlining so heavily. It's literally on the top part of your mouth. If you genuinely believe that the body positivity movement... Do you not see it? Like, her lips are, like, right here, but then she has, like, an extra layer right on top of them, dude. Was for, is for, people who have limb difference. Not just that, though. You're going to the very extreme ends. And you know what's really interesting is whenever I see these people go to the very extreme ends of whatever they're talking about, it's incredibly disingenuous because all that means is, like, your point cannot be proven in and of itself. You have to go to, like, very extreme methods to try to make it seem like your point stands. So, like, in this scenario, oh, so you're saying fat people can't be incorporated in the body positive movement because it's only for people that have limb damage or people that don't have limbs at all. Nah, we're not saying that, dude. No, we're saying there are things about you that you cannot change and that could be that could be limbless you could be limbless you could have missing limbs you can have limb damage things such as so forth but that could also mean things like vitiligo that could also mean things like balding that could also mean things like missing toes it doesn't have to be the ex so extreme scenario of missing an arm or missing a leg no it doesn't have to be that extreme it could just be something as simple as you're going bald or you have vitiligo or so on and so forth it's things like that that's what we're saying that's that's what body positivity is that you i understand why you're going to the very 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 exaggerated version of it because you want to prove a point and i'll let you prove the point slay queen edges and scarring then why are you not advocating and asking and demanding brands to be centering those actually marginalized bodies what are you talking about dude because like there are not the majority of people on the planet okay if we're talking about people that are limbless or have limb damage and have scarring what do you even expect brands to do like i'm gonna reach out to gap and be like hey dude my cousin has like a i don't know my cousin had a scar because she had a c-section when she was like 27 when she gave birth to her son like can you make clothes that are built for people that have c-sections what are you talking about dude oh yeah my fucking grandfather looks like freddy krueger can you make a shirt that would like take away from the stress from his face what are you talking about and like limb damage hey it's really like PTSD that my uncle has to wear the shirt with two sleeves, even though he has one arm. Can you like stop making those? The majority, 
the majority of people on the planet do not have these illnesses. The majority of people on the planet are not going to have limbless stuff or like scarring. I mean, you might have scars to a certain degree. I have a scar on my finger right here and I have a scar right above my eye that not a lot of people even acknowledge. But regardless, asking brands to do what exactly? Like we need more clothes without legs or what are you talking about? Like what, 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 what would you even ask for on that particular front? Most, you know why we don't ask for that? Because one, it's ridiculous and it doesn't make sense. But then two, the majority of people that have these problems, they just kind of put up with it. Like, what do you want them to do? Like, oh yeah, I'm missing a leg and it sucks that when I put on my pants or I put on my shoes and you know, I have to buy two pairs of shoes or sometimes certain stores will even let you get away with just buying one shoe. And then like, I don't know, what do you want? Like, what, what are you even asking for? If you genuinely believe that's what the body positivity movement is for. I don't, but, you know, it's fine. I guess I can argue this point for you. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'll argue the point, even though it's obviously not the point that we're making, but sure. Then why are you not demanding brands to be putting models, to be putting people who have those marginalized bodies to be the front and center of the body positivity campaigns? What the fuck are you talking about? What do you even say? So like I have to hit up like big brands and be like, listen, I <sighs> listen, guys. OK, Gap, Macy's, all these big brands. I think it's real great that you had that black model. It's real great that you had that Korean guy go up there. But we need kind of like people that are missing legs to walk the runway. That's what we need. We need somebody no legs walking the runway. OK, doing that beautiful catwalk, no legs, hoverboarding or whatever they're going to be doing. Um, dudes without arms, dudes without arms, dudes without ears, have them up there modeling. I don't know what they're going to be modeling exactly, but they're going to be modeling that. You, we need more of that. What are you talking about? Do you see how ridiculous that is? Nobody's saying that because it's ridiculous. And if your point is like, oh, well, you're not arguing it. So therefore, your point really, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know why? Because nobody's advocating like, this is such a stupid point to be even talking about. What, do, Like, what are we even saying right now? What are we even talking about? First of all, like I said before, that's not even what the body positivity movement is all about. They incorporate that stuff. But why does it, why does the body positivity movement even need to have representation in modeling? What the fuck are you even talking about? What, like, that'd be like a grocery chain selling chickens and being like, hey, we really need these chickens to be represented in more than just grocery stores. So you know what we're going to do? Put them on bull billboards. Have them wearing like revealing clothing and have them like, I don't know, like see-through bras and panties and stuff. Have them on billboards. Add advertisement spaces. Like what are you talking about, man? You don't need to have modeling because you think that that's like the way to advocate for stuff. That just kind of shows me how mush-brained you are. <laughs> because they're not. Are yeah. they? I think we can all agree. Duh. The people who are at the front of the body positivity campaigns tend to be white able-bodied and straight sized yeah but that doesn't so so like what is your fucking point what is your fucking point nobody like it's so weird because your entire argument binges on the fact that people at the body positivity movement are disabled physically speaking like they're missing arms or they're missing legs or they're scarred but that's like i said it's not even the case like that's that that could take up a portion of it but not the whole thing definitely not marginalized and okay First of all, dude, it just depends on what you mean by marginalized, okay? Like, your definition of marginalized, it's so weird how these people cal calculate this stuff. Because it's very, very lax definition-wise when they want to talk about their own discrimination. So they'll often say things like, I'm being marginalized because I went to the doctor and my doctor told me that being fat was bad. Or I'm being marginalized because I went to go buy a plane ticket and it turns out I had to buy two plane tickets because I'm so incredibly fat. That is incredibly broad of a definition in terms of marginalization. But when you talk about things on this end, it seems like a very narrow definition of marginalized when you're talking about thin white women that might might or might not uh, have a particular illness or disability that you could you may or may not be able to see because a lot of a lot of disabilities may be ambiguous. You know what I'm saying? That'd be like going to a guy that has the has the parking you know what i'm talking about the disabled parking sticker and the guy comes out of the car and he can walk and he's fine you like, this is fucking you're fucking gross how'd you get that that's not even real you're you can walk you can walk and the guy you know he has a stutter or something like that like t -t 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 sorry or he sounds like uh like stevie from malcolm in the middle or something like that like you don't always know what their their physical ailment or uh, maybe not sometimes may not even be a physical ailment but the point i'm making is this is a very weird way of defining this and also it's really fucked up that you have one definition for yourself and then when you when it comes to things that you're arguing you have to completely change up your definitions but i mean it's something you have to do because obviously there's no other way to make this claim 
and definitely do not face the same levels of oppression. So? What is this, like, oppression Olympics, dude? You're white, too, aren't you? You're white, dude. So that means that, like, for one, you're already one out of the... Okay, so white, able-bodied, right? So I guess you're not able-bodied because you're so fat that I guess it's tough for you to get off because you're going like, to blow, your, blow out your knees. All right, fine. You're not able-bodied, which is incredibly sad because you could be able-bodied, but whatever, fine. You're not able-bodied, but you fit one of those stereotypes. You fit one of the criteria, which is white. So, like, what are you even saying right now? Like, you do... You, so you have privilege, too, right? Are you a black woman of color? Where is that, huh? Are you lesbian too? Hmm? How do, like how many more? Why do we have to calculate people based off the oppression that they face? Are people that have more oppression more valuable in terms of like the this oppression Olympics that we got going on? I thought the goal was to not have oppression and to like try to equalize all of the society in general. Like what, what, why, why are we calculating it like this? As truly marginalized bodies. What does truly mean? What do you mean by truly marginalized, dude? Are you marginalized because you have to buy two plane tickets and you can't properly sit down in a bathroom tub because your butt cheeks are so big? I'm not talking about her necessarily, but I'm saying in general, like you guys are complaining about things that are obviously not really big problems. I mean, they're big problems, big, big, but they're not big problems. Like most of the ailments you guys are facing are things that you have brought upon yourself and can be alleviated through diet and exercise so when you say marginalized are you also talking look at this fucking overline look at this overline it's ridiculous dude what have you been doing man what is this shit you got going on here bro even clifford didn't have lipsless red so if you believe that the body positivity movement wasn't for fat people it's not for fat people that's what it is okay you guys have <laughs> What tends to happen in these organizations and th like big, big, like, uh, you know, social movements is they have a great idea. Like, for instance, fat acceptance in and of itself is not a bad thing. Um, the baseline, the understanding that being fat is OK if that's what you want to do. That is fine. But then it gets fucked up because like people start saying weird shit. Like, oh, I should be recompensated for the extra plane ticket that I need. Oh, I should be recompensated because when I put on my necklace, it physically doesn't fit around my neck. So I had to buy a necklace extender or things such as like, oh, we need to get rid of stairs in general. or We need to make rooms wider and the bathrooms are not wide enough. So we need to make those bigger in general. So like the baseline understanding of these organizations or like systemic movements or whatever societal movements are fine like most of the time. But then what tends to happen is like over time, they they get infiltrated by people that are ridiculous and nobody says, hold on now, hold, hold up. That kind of seems a little bit, you're kind of saying something a little bit crazy right now. And I don't think that really resonates with our messaging. Nobody says that. So when you see the fat acceptance, when you see the body positivity movement, even though they may have been saying one thing at one point, that is no longer what they're saying anymore. And that's because people in the organization feel bad or maybe they just like think that it's okay to have people like this in the organization that say blasphemous, totally just disgusting shit. And eventually it becomes the norm because like once somebody says it once, then some somebody says it twice and three times and suddenly it's the motto. So what it comes down to is like, what you're saying right now is like, oh, well, it, it, you know, we're saying this. So like that is what the body positivity movement is saying. But it's, that's not the baseline. though. That's not what it is. Right. That's not what it ever was. It doesn't even make sense to have you guys in the organization to begin with. You just kind of stole it, if that makes any sense. But it was for people of limb difference. Then why are you not advocating for more? like more models who have limb difference? This is a dumb point. This is a really dumb point. That doesn't make any like. <sighs> <laughs> this is a really fucking dumb point, dude, okay? Like, the message here isn't, why aren't we... Why do you have to keep focusing on models? What is, like, what is up to... What, 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 could you, couldn't you just advocate in other directions? Like, maybe donations, philanthropy, or maybe, like, just being an overall good person, maybe putting good messaging out on the internet? I don't know. Like, why does it have to be, we need limbless models walking the red carpet? Like, fucking Lieutenant Dan walking the red carpet because... I guess body positivity, we really need Lieutenant Dan, you know, fucking Forrest Gump in the crowd going like this. No, dude, that's not, you don't need models. Why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep saying models? I know that she's a model, I get it. But still, like, why does that, why is this like on the forefront of your mind? Then why are you not advocating for more, like more models who have limb differences to be the front and center of these body positivity campaigns that brands put out? It's not about what we want. Like, 
when brands put out messaging and they go, hey, we're totally inclusive and we're totally like cool with everybody. And guess what? We're going to like really try our best to be as inclusive as possible. You do realize that like basically means nothing, right? Like that's almost kind of like the most ambiguous statement. Like that one girl that was like, why is that? I think it was actually um, Samira that sent, made that video where she was like, well, why is it that companies will say this and they won't actually execute? Are you, fucking, are you fucking dumb? Companies say things all the time and that doesn't actually mean they'll do anything different. They're just coming out with a thing that makes you feel good about it. You understand? Like if they say like, oh, we want equality. Who doesn't want equality? Like when have you ever met somebody on the street and like, hey, dude, do you want equality? And you go, like, no, I fucking hate equality. I don't like black people because they're gay. Like nobody says that. You understand? It's like, it's like those people that have like those big, those big um, flags behind them with like their like the american flag and it's got like the red line through it and it's like yeah i support i support the firefighters you and everybody else like why are you why do you have a flag dedicated to supporting firefighters it's like the most obvious statement in the world do you think anybody is going to come into your house and see that flag that supports firefighters and go i can't be in a house with a bigot like you supporting firefighters saving kittens rescuing people from houses oh gross Nobody's doing that. Nobody is doing that. So it's like the most obvious statement. Well, whatever, man. Like, it's such a, it, like, why are you, this is some mush brain shit. Those who have limb differences to be the front and center of these body positivity campaigns that brands put out. That just kind of goes to show you this person has absolutely no idea what the real reason why these organizations even existed to begin with. Like, they're so mushed brain right now that they have to think, like, the only way you can actually make changes if you have a model walk in the red carpet with no legs or I guess you need fat people. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Your, your definition of inclusivity is weird as hell. When somebody thinks of inclusivity, they're thinking, about like easier access to stuff like a guy that's missing legs doesn't want to have to worry about walking up 10 flights of stairs because he doesn't have legs he wants elevator accesses and things such and so forth he's not worried about whether or not there's a fucking red carpet model with no legs walking that carpet dude nobody that's such a weird thing you guys have literally weird ideas of how, why this like whatever and then you say this shit and then you go like this as if you've said anything at all. You're, all your points so far, all your points thus far are literally meaningless. They are all not centered in reality. And it's really weird that you're making these faces because it makes it seem like you made a point. When your point was hog water, your point was literally dust milk. It's not real. Your point is meaningless. Slay queen. Because it's not about that, is it? No, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Isn't that crazy? I would love love because one thing i regret about that original video is i i i really i mean i am fat so i'm gonna like think isn't that crazy that that video was a year ago and you still have done nothing about your body since then think about that first but i wish i was broader and talked about how just i would love to see all marginalized bodies it's not going to be possible like the idea of like we need to see our all, all like at what point do we reach a quota right because it's like oh we want representation across the board like, so everybody want reputation to like, what if it's like some people are just not in those industries? What if like, what are you just going to force people to go into the industries? Like you want black straight, you want black women of color who are Indonesian that also like to play tic-tac-toe on the weekends that are also carpenters. Like you see, like how far do we go to the inclusion argument? I don't like it. I don't like when we have to reach quotas or like we need this because we need this representation. Like I get it. Like you want to see more black people or you want to see more of this and this. But at some point you just got to understand this is a, like a diverse hire like you're literally just hiring people because you need to reach a quota be the front and center of body positive campaigns because all marginalized bodies be the front and center of body positive campaigns because that's who it's a rid that's what it was for so like what do you even like just i guess just watch <laughs> go to go to your local bookstore go to your local library and go ask the front desk clerk hey can you get me a where's waldo book and then just get all the pages and just mesh them together there you go that's like the entire representation of the body positive like how many people are we gonna have on the fucking front page of body positivity like a gajillion people because like that's really what you're gonna have to go for that's what it was for and it has been co-opted and i understand you know what like to play the game i actually really understand why brands don't highlight and use um truly marginalized bodies in their campaigns what are truly marginalized bodies dude you need to you need to be specific when you talk about this shit because it's, it's different in different parts of where you're from right like if here in america marginalized can be a whole bunch of things like it could be your black dude it could be you're a gay dude that i don't know like you weren't 
fully fulfilled with that one time that you sucked a guy off. So maybe you're looking for a quest of finding another penis. I don't know. It could be like, it's literally so ambiguous of a term. And if you're from like another country, it could be marginalized in the sense of like, I don't know, maybe you're a dark skinned Indian. That could be marginalization too. It's just really weird. Like, what is it? What does it mean? Please help us. Because they don't want to have to moderate their comments. It's just, you know, the problem is, is like, because the term marginalized is so, is, is so incredibly ambiguous, if companies were like, we want to put marginalized groups at the forefront, again, it's ambiguous. So it could mean like a black guy. It could mean like a lesbian woman that's obese, that has toenail cramps. It could be a whole bunch of shit. You understand? That's why they say it. They don't want to like specify because if they know they do, they're going to like lock themselves into something with the barrage of or they'll just like fuck their own mouths like how many times have you had organizations say something and they immediately had to backtrack because it was so incredibly like crazy what they said hatred and vitriol that comes with platforming truly marginalized bodies what are you talking about <laughs> bro i i'm sorry dude I, this woman has got it this woman is on some different shit i have a friend that's works for that's surprising thing truly marginalized bodies i have a friend who works for like a big fashion house and they used like i think i think they might have used like non-binary or maybe even trans models and one of their campaigns and the vitriol in the comments is disgusting and they that means that's more work for them to do it just kind of it just depends on what you're talking about dude because most <laughs> Most people, being trans is an incredibly new thing currently, right? And it depends on what your user demographic is. If you know that the primary people that use your products are Christian people that go to church and are married and have children, and then you're advertising trans products to them or like trans models, um, yeah, of course, that's just going to be weird. Uh, yeah, dude, it'd be like trying to, it'd be like a vegan company that specializes in making plant-based products and, you know, sourcing their clothing through like organic processes that don't infect the environment. Randomly one day having an advertisement of like the CEO guzzling down like tons and tons of cheeseburgers. Just, num, 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 num. You know what I'm saying? Like that wouldn't, you, you, it's the same shit. Like you have to at least understand where you're, where you're going with the thing. I don't have a problem with trans people, but it's definitely weird when you have your own sort of people, right? And then you stretch out to try to incorporate things just because. Like, I'm not saying don't do it. Like, go ahead, do whatever you want. It's your company. But you have to at least understand there's going to be some pushback there. Being trans is most definitely a touchy subject nowadays. So whether or not they should be doing that work, that's a whole other video, right? But they have to do it. They have to moderate it. And that is exhausting. It's what it is. I mean, that's that that's the entire nature of the internet. And so when I see these brands putting forward straight size, you know, maybe like a size 14, size 16, able body. Damn. <laughs> is that fucking, damn, size 16, size 18. Is that big? Somebody let me know. And size, you know, maybe like a size 14, size 16 able-bodied and white people in at the center of their you know all bodies are beautiful campaigns that they like to do i'll have a few black guys in there too i mean if you ever see like the all bodies is beautiful type of thing they're pretty inclusive man about what you see nowadays and sometimes it's like really obvious too because like yo i remember the other day not the other day, it was like a month ago i walked into like a target or something like that and i went to the clothing section and i was just like I remember I was looking around. I was like, "Wow, there's a lot of black people on these uh, on these wall arts." You know, like I was like, "Where do white Where do white people at?" You know, it's like there wasn't a single white person on the wall. I saw like four black women. I saw one Asian dude with his shirt open, and then I saw I think like some kind of some kind of weird Indian person. I don't know what it was, but there was not a white person in sight, which is fine. Like I don't really care, but it's obvious sometimes. It's like very jarring to see it because like sometimes it's just like pushed in your face, and I'm not somebody that actually really cares about that too much unless it's like actually affecting whatever I'm doing or buying whatever. So like if your clothes are still the same or whatever the fuck, I don't really care for the most part. But if it's like media or if it's like television or it's something that I like to consume, like I like Star Wars, right? Um, it's very obvious that a lot of Star Wars nowadays is like literal trash because they like to shoehorn in things that don't really make sense at all. And, uh, you know, women powerful and things like that, which is fine. Like if you want women to be powerful, there's no problem with 
characters being women. It's just like, I just personally think that if you're going to write a woman character, can you at least write her well? And then what tends to happen is that when you shoehorn in these affirmative action hires, they suck because these actors are, one, maybe the actors are not good. And if they are good, then maybe they're just not written well, okay? Because I'm willing to accept that some actors are very good actors, right? But what happens is because they're not written well, because they're just shoehorned in because you need to reach a quota. Like, for instance, I don't know if you guys watched the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show, but um, Reva's character, which was the main bad guy of the show, which is crazy, by the way, should have been Darth Vader, but whatever, um, is a black woman. And a lot of people just didn't like her character. And then, like, the statements that came out were like, oh, it's just Disney just doesn't like women. You know, like, oh, you know, like the audience, like all the all the Star Wars fans, they don't like women. Nah, dude, it's not. We don't. It's not about not liking women, dude. It's just about you guys suck at writing women like i don't know why you guys don't put character development you can't just put a blank state of a woman and be like oh yeah here you go she sucks is bad so when you see when i see movies tv shows and things like that and they create really really bad woman characters or black guy characters and just kind of throw them in there it's not good you didn't do anything besides reach a quota and somehow you think that people are racist when they respond yeah this guy's not a good character it's kind of bad and if you all and you if you automatically reply with well you're racist because you think it's a bad character no nah, just fucking write your characters better stop stop shitting stop giving a shit shit and then expecting us to want it because you, because it's the black guy or something. That's terrible. Dude, write better fucking characters. I love Ahsoka Tana. Ahsoka Tana is a black woman. She's played by a fucking Rosario Darson. I like that movie. I like that TV show. I, I, I like the Ahsoka Tana. I don't care the fuck that she's a woman, dude. If you write good characters, that's great. But stop writing bad shit characters and blaming it on the patriarchy or racism or something like that most of the time dude we live in america okay we're like the most racially sensitive people in the fucking world okay we're like hyper focused on everything so anyway that's because they're taking the easy these are beautiful campaigns that they like to do that's because they're taking the easiest option because they don't want to have to deal with the abuse that's what i genuinely believe i'm sure that's part of it sure but it's also because it's an un it's an unaskable task because if you say inclusivity and then you mean like what? Like unlimited body types? Like fat guys, black girls with, I don't know, like nail polish that is pink and purple, Billy Idol? I like, what do you mean by inclusivity? Like to what degree? Because it's like you, you it's an un, it's an unreachable task. Um, They're going to fail regardless. If you say like, we're going to represent all bodies and you leave out like 99.9% .9 of them, which is literally what they're doing. That's yes, what it is, and it and it, and and then it hurts the actual the it hurts marginalized people first. It doesn't. It's just you know it's just really weird because it just really depends on what you mean by marginalized groups because some groups don't give a fuck if they're represented. Some groups it's like the last like for instance, do you think dudes without legs are really really like sitting down in their chairs going like this is fucking ridiculous i can't believe i watched that that modeling show there wasn't a single person with the one they all had two legs i'm missing both i would have i would have been great if they were just missing some toes just one or two toes i would have been great they couldn't just go backstage and just snip off a few and then have some representation have them dragging or their dead foot across the fucking floor nobody's doing that shit so when you say things like it's hurting the actual marginalized groups. How do you know that these white people are not marginalized? First of all, that's such a weird thing to say. It just depends on where you're talking, right? Like, it, again, I need to know specifics. I need to know what you mean by marginalized. Why the fuck are you so ambiguous when you're trying to talk about things so specific? Um, hard marginalized bodies, and it hurts the, the actual integrity of the body positivity movement. Because if we're saying- All I'm saying, all, all I'm hearing is here is like, okay, so what I'm hearing here is that she's saying she doesn't like it that she's not incorporated in the body positivity movement because even though she hasn't touched on this, I'm guessing that she doesn't want to because she knows if she does, she's going to acknowledge something that she doesn't want to hear and that she doesn't want to believe, which is that if you're fat, you can lose weight within your own power. And the entire purpose of the body positivity movement literally is, th is the idea that there are things that you cannot change and you have to accept those things. So she doesn't like it that she's not incorporated in that. So what she's doing is like, she's putting on this like scarecrow or she's like gaslighting you into believing that you are actually not representing the body positivity movement because you don't have guys without legs walking the red carpet or something like that, which doesn't even make sense because nobody even wants like most of these organizations are not advocating for models. I, I don't know. It's just 
what all I'm hearing is like trying to distract and trying to see trying to make it seem like what she's saying is more justified or like a good reason why she's in there basically saying like well if I'm not incorporated in it then like you guys don't even do it anyway so like why does it matter saying oh those people need body positivity then what do the actual truly marginalized bodies need we what are they can you just tell us what they are <laughs> you know what I mean like no Ugh. okay um like diversity is so important it just depends on what you mean by diversity dude like i think diversity is good but i don't think diversity for diversity's sake is good if you're just throwing people into roles or media or whatever the fuck because you need to reach a quota that's not a good thing that's not a good thing because that's gonna hurt whatever the fuck you need to have organic places for people okay like if somebody if a group for instance right let's say men have a higher proclivity to go in a particular degree and women have a higher proclivity to go into another certain degree. What do you do? Like, let's say men, hypothetically, there's like 99.9% .9 of men in this job and there's 99.9% women, .9 of women in this job. What do you do? Do you just force the women to come over to the men's side and you force the men to go over to the women's side? No. Sometimes people just separate you know people self-segregate okay not everything needs to be adjusted you understand so when i hear people like with this particular type of this ideology and things like that up front and this is what i say a lot of times with these people is like the on the top of the iceberg on the top of the iceberg it seems fine like oh yeah inclusivity great diversity great but then like the bottom underneath it is actually quite devious because of what they're actually uh, what they're actually advocating for is like forcing people into things because, which is really terrible because not all black guys are the same. Not all fat people are the same. Not all women are the same. Like people think differently, right? We're all different people. And sure, we might share some cultural um, backgrounds, like certain black dudes might share some other uh, other black dudes cultures and things such as so forth. And some women share some women culture and stuff like that. But objectively speaking, everybody's an individual. And to just lump people together and say, we need representation here is not always the best thing because that doesn't always indicate that that the, that particular group of people like one thing i used to have a really i still do actually but it's no longer implemented anymore which was affirmative action right um throwing black people or whoever else into particular schools because they're black in my opinion was always wrong and from the research that i did it didn't actually really even help black students because most of the time these schools needed to reach a quota and sometimes they would just kind of have like oh well we only had certain amount of black people apply because guess what there aren't that many black people in america which is like 13 percent of the population right so what are we going to do well we'll just go to these lower end black people in the sense of like their grades and we'll have them go into these really really high-end schools that they could have done really really well in if they went to like a mid-range school right but because they're in these high-end schools they tend to fail and they drop out and then it doesn't really affect the school because guess what they can just next year just have more black students or women or whoever comes in and they can have those those people replace the quota that they have already and it never it never worked and then also not all black people, not all women, not all fat people are the same, right? If you're going, black people need assistance. Well, guess what? Not all black people are the same, right? So like a, a kid that grew up in the projects with a single mother, you know, living on food stamps, government housing, is not the same black dude compared to a black dude that grew up in Beverly Hills that has a house, two parents, you know, lots of money, no problem with finances and things such and so forth. Those are two very different black people. So if, you're, if your idea is we need black people in these roles well you need certain black people in these roles let's be honest here you don't want all black people in the roles because some black people don't apply to your situation in the same way that for instance when these people say we need more fat representation you don't need you don't want more fat representation that's not actually what you want what you want is you want fat representation in the area that you want to see it in because most fat people do not agree with the stuff these people say so given that if you want diversity for diversity's sake, most of the time it doesn't work because what you're doing is you're generally, you're gen, you're generally speaking, you're just blanketing. You're just throwing a blanket over all these groups and saying these people need representation. When in reality, a lot of them are unique specimens. Anyway, I hope that covered it. Diversity is so important. And we need brand. And by the way, I hate the statement of diversity is important. You're not actually saying anything. It's just it's like it's just a talking point. And and companies who actually have the resources to to advocate for diversity and that just because a company has resources doesn't mean that they should be held i feel like these people would just prefer to live in a world where i don't even know dude like if you owned a company 
and somebody in a group of people like came to you and said like you have the resources to do so much so like does that mean that i have to do it no i'm gonna do what i fucking want it's my company and and that can withstand and like the virtue signaling the virtue signaling especially is what what i'm hearing here is that you guys don't feel as much as i do therefore you're bad unfortunately the hate that can come along with it with platforming platforming people like marginalized people to withstand it and to hold firm um <sighs> gotta take that breath in the middle that said dude, that shit was tough to get out <laughs> that shit was tough to get out body positivity is not just about confidence in your own body okay. it is that but how do we actually enable that? It's not, it's not even about confidence. What the fuck? You're missing the entire purpose. It's not even the fucking objective of it. Body positivity is about accepting your body even though you have things that are not necessarily optimal, okay? Like I'm balding. I accepted that. It's I, body positivity. You're missing a leg. Well, guess what? Even though it sucks that you're missing a leg and everybody else has two legs, most people, and you only have one, it's okay. Don't let that hold you back. Accept it and move on. There are things, there are better things to worry about in your life than to be obsessing over something that you could never change ever again, right? It's not like you could take your thumb and just start blowing and fucking have your leg just reappear. No, that's not how it works. So you don't even, like, ah. it's like you don't even understand what the fuck you're on saying. You, you, you really don't even understand. It's not even about confidence. Never about confidence. It was just about accepting just about confidence in your own body it is that no it's not how, no it's not what do you mean how we actually enable that confidence is by making sure that people feel at home see this is when i say like these people have absolutely no idea what they're talking about and they like say it they say it so obviously and they're confident too when they say it as if they know what they're talking about when in reality we just sat there this entire thing this entire three four five minute video of this woman talking was literally meaningless she's not even saying anything of value how do we actually enable that confidence is by making sure that people feel at home A aka fat people need to be feel at home in the world world in the body that they have and that means giving them the same level of access that a you know straight sized able bodied person yeah, yeah why are you why are you why are you throwing in fat people straight bodied able bodied what are you talking about right now first of all that's never going to be possible unless you're unless you mean like because it's it's never going to be possible because there are going to be people in the world world that have illnesses or disorders or things that are affecting them that we cannot actually do anything about because the standard to which we can change stuff is going to be different so for instance you might be able to make things more wheelchair accessible like we can we can in in society we can incorporate wide wide sweeping things so for instance most people walk most people can use their legs so what do we have stairs we have stairs and we have walkable areas okay well, a lot of those people actually have problems walking, right? That's like the number that's like the number one thing after that, right? Which is that people have a hard time walking. So what do we do? Escalators. We have elevators. We have other accessibility devices like wheelchairs and things such and so forth. We we make the the crosswalk. We have people that are visually impaired, right? We could do a lot of stuff, but to what degree is up to the the amount of people that are affected by this particular illness right so if you're going okay people that can't walk or people have trouble walking people that are blind people that can't go upstairs people this and this and you incorporate all that but then you start getting really really deep and then you go uh people that people that cannot go outside without it being dark also that are blind people that can't do this and they also wear tinfoil hat sometimes but not all the time they need to be exempt from the five the 5g networks all across so we need to take those out because they're the the electromagnetic fields are affecting them so heavily even though there's only five of them in the entire world we need to take out all of the 5g net you see how like ridiculous that statement is now we can do it baseline broadly speaking we can incorporate these things but we cannot do things based off of like a small niche community of people that are negatively affected by something that is very very small and then also if you're fat you do realize that you have pretty good accessibility tools in society in general and it's really crazy given the fact that you have these accessibility tools and you are suffering from an illness that you can quite literally alleviate by yourself and that means giving them the same level of access that a, you know, straight-sized, able-bodied person would have.
access to healthcare, access to the job market, access to yeah. But like, oh man, it's just it's all great on paper. It's really all great on paper, but you, it just doesn't make sense in practicality, dude. And this person is basically just saying things that you want to hear. It's great to say we want people that are disabled to have jobs. It's great to say that we want people that are disabled to go to the to go to the doctor and get support and this and this and this and this and whatever you but in practicality what does that mean so are we supposed to give a guy with no legs uh, a position to where he has to stand up all day because it's even though it's not possible are we supposed to <laughs> like how far do we go how far do we go because if you are telling people that they need to hire somebody off the basis of you need to do this otherwise you will suffer the negative consequences even though it's not plausible to hire this individual because they literally physically cannot meet the needs for this particular job title what you're actually doing is like fascism that's some like fascist shit the government coming in telling you what you can and cannot do you are quite literally advocating for something that is i don't think these people actually understand what they're actually advocating for and it's very obvious <laughs> Like it's, it's all great on paper. It is like, do I want people that are disabled to have jobs? Yes. But I don't want them to have jobs objectively speaking in the sense of like, if you have no arms, I don't, you know, obviously I don't think that you're going to be the pitcher at a fucking baseball game in the NLB, right? Maybe things within your boundaries. Like you can't expect everybody to have equal access to every job ever because certain people are going to be more physically inclined or mentally inclined for certain positions. And you can't just shoehorn in people because that's not how it works. It's not how that works. And you're probably going to get negative consequences as a result of that. Uh, equal, equal outcome, right? That's really what it comes down to. It's terrible, terrible ideology. Have access to healthcare, access to the job market, access to, you know, just literally access to buildings. Like Yeah, but something, man, you're fucking crazy, bro. You're fucking crazy. Some of these things are just ridiculous, like on their face, dude. Like I, I agree that these things should be, we, we can make things better, but to what degree you got, you're, you're literally speaking off of some kind of like weird dystopian fucking world that doesn't exist it's you, you i get what you're saying but it's not centered in reality so honestly speaking none of this even matters your words are literally as meaningless as a child going up to santa claus going i want like you know what i really want i want peter pan to come to my window and i want him to tell me i'm beautiful and i want hot pockets for dinner every single night and then i also want to have a baby sister even though i don't like baby sisters like what you're that's what you're saying like it's basically a child just coming up with shit that they want and it's probably a little bit more believable because i can get them hot pockets every single night i can't make rooms fucking ginormous can't redesign the entire like systemic structure of our society off the basis of a guy without legs or a woman that's fat like what do you what, what the fuck are you asking for do you not understand what you're saying is ridiculous oh man oh shoot care access to the job market access to you know just literally access to buildings like ac like access is so important if you have access if you feel like you're at home in the world then wow. your confidence will grow you know um yeah i guess i, I <laughs> I'd love, I'd love us to take the body positivity movement a bit more seriously. What are you, you're not even, you don't even understand what it is. You're just saying shit. You're just talking. And I love brands um, okay. to, to use their platforms to truly advocate for it. You're dumb. There, there's nothing to say about it than that. You're dumb. All right, guys, that's the end of the video for I cannot tolerate the incessant words of this particular individual any longer. Um, just spewing absolute hateful, disgusting language that really doesn't mean anything at all. But you know what does mean a lot? You know what does mean a lot? You. You mean a lot to me. You mean so much to me. I often gaze upon you at any point I possibly can because you're just so ungodly levels of beautiful. Like, there's no way that God could have created something as beautiful jaw-droppingly i think it would be an affront to him if i'm being honest so whoever made you was probably mad at god probably have equal power but anyway doesn't matter you're a beautiful specimen if you um enjoyed today's video i appreciate if everybody could leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all those things i'd appreciate tremendously so if you could do that stuff for me i'd appreciate you tremendously if you want to become a member you can go ahead and do that by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the join notification right after that if you don't want to that's fine too i appreciate you regardless for taking time out of your day to watch this video if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now leave it down below by typing in 
anger because this video made me angry, but it's okay because I'm quick to adjust to anger receptors. I'm not that angry, but I am kind of angry, but it doesn't matter. Um, maybe you like it when I'm a little angry, when I get my blood pumped, when I start getting a little bit mad. Maybe you like that. I don't know. Regardless, you're a beautiful specimen of human being. I care for you on a deep level that I feel like is probably a little bit toxic, a little bit. I feel like Britney Spears made that song for us, our relationship, that don't you know that you're toxic? Ah! Whatever she was doing. I don't know. But you're a beautiful specimen. How could I not be obsessed with you? You're literally the epitome of what I need every single day in my life. So thank you for being here. If you want to check out my social medias, it will be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord, and other things like that. All you have to do is click the description of this video or the description of the YouTube channel, and then you can find those things. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.